So while our n-butanol reaction is refluxing away at a nice constant temperature of 140, uh, we're going to set up the reaction with the t-butanol. And that reaction we will carry out in a nice clean screw cap centrifuge tube. And this reaction has to be run for a very short period so that we don't get any equilibrium, just a 15 second. But since I, I have the extra tubes and the extra acid, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up two. I'm going to set up one that's uh, just going to go for the 15 seconds. I'm going to set another one where we intentionally let it equilibrate. And then we'll analyze that by GC and see what the difference is. So the caps here should have the white Teflon insert. You'll notice some of the caps don't have the white Teflon insert. That'll leak, and I don't want it to leak because it'll be concentrated acid. So I got my two centrifuge tubes. And those fit nicely in one of these test tube racks. So into each of those centrifuge tubes, I'm going to add the 2.4 milliliters of concentrated acid. The gloves on again so I don't hurt myself. So 4.8 will go down to 2.4, and then the remainder will go into the other tube. full score to this pipette bulb holds about 1.2 milliliters or so. 1.5 if you really make sure you get all the air out. And so I've transferred 2.4 milliliters to each of those two centrifuge tubes and I'm going to stick this in the sink underneath that water flow to just kind of rinse it out. I'll rinse that some more later. So now before we add the t-butanol to the centrifuge tubes, we're going to add our extraction solvent, which is n-pentane. I'm going to grab another pipette and pipette bulb. And we're going to put about a milliliter of n-pentane in each vial. I'll measure out two milliliters of pentane. And this, of course, will float on top of that aqueous layer. Got a milliliter of pentane for that one. And another milliliter of pentane for the other one. So what's going to happen when we set this reaction up by adding the t-butanol is it will react and then the products will immediately go into the pentane layer 
and thus avoid any further reaction with the acid. There's no need to wash this. It was just a volatile solvent. I'm just going to shake it out a little bit and put it right back. And get another little Erlenmeyer out to hold that because I'm going to need that pipette to transfer the top layer into my conical vial. And we've got down a little lower than 140. I'm going to tweak that up just a little bit. Reflux is kind of stopping. So you can see there's two layers, right? The aqueous acid layer down at the bottom and then the pentane layer uh, up on top. And we've got the same situation in this one. Centrifuge tubes are nice for extractions. It's very easy to remove the bottom layer by putting your pipette all the way down the bottom. We will actually be removing the top layer into the conical vial with some sodium carbonate. Um, that's a little bit trickier, but we don't need all of it. We just need enough to analyze, so we'll leave a little bit behind. And at this point, I'm done with the pipette that had the acid in it. So I'm going to rinse that pipette before I toss it in the glass waste. Yeah, so I don't get a bunch of acid in the glass waste container. Put that ball back. I'll need it again later. For now, I'm through with that. So we need, before we add our T-butanol to our centrifuge tube, uh, we need to prepare our conical vial with the sodium carbonate in it. So we're going to grab a nice clean 3 milliliter conical vial. Yeah, that one looks a little dirty. Yeah, I think that one's clean enough. And we need a septum cap for that. handle those with gloves on. So the septum cap has a Teflon side that creases when you stick your fingernail in it, so that's the Teflon, and then a silicone side that bounces back. And you can look on the side, sometimes you can see the thin layer. This one's a little tough, so the best way is to figure out which layer creases. And then that side's towards product, which means the silicone side goes up. So I need to measure out 0.2 grams, and the best thing for that is going to be this little V-shaped one of sodium carbonate. So we'll stick our vial in there and tear it. was about 0.01. About 0 0.16. Maybe two more scoops. Before you see that the uh, air currents in the lab have quite an effect. So that's 0.226 grams, a little more than we really wanted. Yeah, point two zero one. 
0.202. It'll gradually start sucking some moisture out of the air because this is anhydrous sodium carbonate and it's a moist day today. So we have 0 0.202 or 202 milligrams of sodium carbonate in our three mil conical vial. And that takes it up to about the 0.1 milliliter mark. I'm going to use this again later, so I'll just set it aside. This was for the pentane. And it will be used again to remove the layer. So I'm going to stick the cap on here so it stays anhydrous. And I don't trust the centrifuge cap not to leak. <laughs> so I am going to wear my gloves when I do that shaking. Back up at 140 on here, so that's looking good. It's refluxing again. The reflux lines there. So I have my pipetter, which is set at 950 microliters. And my T-butanol, which hopefully will not solidify in the pipetter. Sometimes it does. So I'm going to take 950 microliters of T-butanol and stick it in the centrifuge tube. And this one I'm going to allow to, and then down to the second one, this is the one that I'm going to allow to react for way too long. So I'm going to shake this back and forth a few times. I'm being careful not to tip my pipetter past horizontal. And it'll generate some heat, so I want to vent it. And then I'll shake it some more. And I'm just going to leave that cap just slightly loose so it doesn't build up any pressure. Set that one in there. Now I'm going to do the same thing for this one, but this one I'm going to do fast. I'm only going to shake that for 15 seconds, and I'm going to let it settle and immediately remove the uh, contain layer. So I'm done with my T-butanol. Got my beaker back here that I'm going to put this tip in when I'm done so I can set this guy down. And I'm going to take this cap off so that it's ready when I need to uh, transfer the layer. I got my pipette ready there. So we're adding the T-butanol. Get rid of the tip. Set this guy down. And then I'm just going to shake that back and forth, give it a little vent, shake it back and forth. And I just want to do this for about 15 seconds. And then I'm going to let it settle just enough that I can pipette that top layer without getting any of the bottom layer. So once I've pipetted that top layer off and added it to the sodium carbonate, any excess acid will immediately get quenched and any water will get absorbed into the anhydrous material. So I'm going to set that tip so it's down right about the Right about at the interface. So I'm pulling off most of that top layer, but I don't want any water. And we'll add that to the sodium carbonate. You saw it bubble a little bit. And I will put that pipette in there. So you notice that a little more top layer is separating, but we don't need that. Oops. because we've got enough liquid. So I'm going to shake that around a little bit, make sure that any excess acid is quenched, give it a vent, shake it around a little bit more, let it vent, let it vent. So that's completed. 
the t-butanol reaction. And now I just want to let that settle really nicely so I don't actually get any of the solid into the DC syringe. So I'm going to set that one aside. This is the one that we're letting go too long, so I'm going to shake this some more and vent it. I'm just going to let this thing sit for quite a while. Periodically shake it to mix it and let it vent. Uh, this extra acid can get dumped down the sink. Plenty of water. Set that centrifuge tube in there. So we'll shake that again. Looks like it's not leaking, so I could probably take the gloves off. Got some more. And we're still at 140, so we've actually achieved our equilibrium on this and butanol reaction, so that's pretty good. So I'm gonna go I'm go ahead and prepare another uh, conical vial for that layer. Septum cap. But we'll let that go for a good while. Since we're stuck here anyway, waiting for the unbutanol, there's no reason not to let that go. Again, there's the creasy side here, that's the Teflon side. And we're going to go measure out another. 0.2 grams of sodium carbonate. This time I know that it's at about the 0.1 mark. So we tear the vial. So I can fill that up to about the 0.1 mark before I even worry about massing it again.